if you had lost, what do you think your life would be like today? Welcome back, Chris Crone here on Have It All. Today we have a really, really special guest. I've got the former attorney general from the state of Utah, chief prosecutor, with the most amazing, incredible story because the government tried to take him down. And guess what? He fought back. And today we'll find out whether he won or not. Uh, today is about making sure that the government doesn't legally abuse you. Because we live in a world today where it's like, man, you can imagine maybe your, your neighbor suing you or maybe an unhappy client or, or, or a company. But how does it go down when your own government, maybe it's a government agency, the SEC or the FTC, maybe it's just like the, the federal government themselves or a state government sues you. I can't, even, I can't even imagine. John, you have been through so much, but you came out on top in such an amazing way. So first of all, welcome. So glad to have you here on Have It All. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be with you. So crazy, right? Like, first of all, give us the background, right? You've been practicing law for how many years? Oh, yeah, insane. I, well, to this point, over 30 years in law. To, at that point, about 25 years in law. And I never could have imagined in any scenario where my own government would come against me because I was the big dog. I was the attorney general. I was the chief legal officer of the state of Utah when they started to investigate me and come after me. And I was just blown away that they could do that. And I hadn't done anything wrong. Now, now, what, now first of all, how long were you already attorney general? Well, I had been attorney, well, no, you won't believe this. I, I had been chief deputy attorney general, so the guy really running the office of the attorney general for three years. Okay. I was inaugurated on a Monday, the 7th of, J of January, and they came after me on the 12th. No way. Five days later, I had a five-day honeymoon as attorney general before they started coming after me, and I was running for my life. Well, now, I got to say, now, now, why do you think they were doing that? Why what now? Why'd they do it? Uh, because they could. They're, I mean, I know, I know why they did it, Chris. I know who was involved, and I'm poking and, where and I probably I'm, shouldn't I'm, poke, but I'm, I'm so telling you, I'm curious. telling you, it was insane that people in my own party and in the other party came after me because I was in the way. Wow, I was in the way. I was the guy who was going to be, and I, I shouldn't. I mean, I really shouldn't be this egotistical because my my wife and my family doesn't like it. But I, I was set up a statewide election holder in my early 50s, had raised more money than anybody else had ever raised in that kind of a campaign before, one statewide. And they saw me coming. You, they saw you as a threat. And I was the guy who was going to take the limited opportunities there are in politics in my state. And they didn't want me there. Wow. So this is a scary thing. And one of the reasons why I wanted to be a guest today is, is um, one, because you do have a fascinating history. But um, 12 years ago, I went through something similar. I mean, I, w when the SEC showed up on my front door uh, with 93 allegations and a 14-month investigation that cost me a million dollars, by the way, to defend myself... I was terrified. Back then I was young. I, I, I didn't have really a whole lot of legal experience. And I just, I literally just lost sleep over this. And I was a nervous wreck. And I'm like, it's not worth it. Business isn't worth it. Being an American isn't worth it. Like I questioned the root of just about everything because of how scared I was. Uh, I wouldn't be that way today, but I, I just did also didn't have the experience. So what was it like for you practicing law? And then all of a sudden having something like this happen all those years later? Similar emotions, believe me, and no matter who you are, no matter how prepared you are, you go through the same cycle, I think, of, of, of shock, um, disbelief, um, anger, and then now what do I do, right? Yeah. How, and how do I defend myself against these terrible allegations that aren't true? When all the media is blowing it up in the air, when you're a politician, when you're the chief legal officer and people are saying that you tried to sell your own immunity um, at fire, fire insurance to people who are contributing to your campaigns, and you're saying, my goodness, I... I I have a political career to save. And then it turns into, I have my liberty to save. Got I have it. my license to practice law to save. And it becomes much more serious than even your career. Well, so, okay, so I was actually kind of curious. Like, you didn't, you know, eh, listen, when legally someone comes at you, you always have this, this choice. It's like, do I, do I fight or do I flight? Am I going to settle or am I going to fight? Why did you have to fight? Well, so when they come after your freedom, when they come after your reputation... And even when they come after your career, there, there are some things that are non-negotiable. Liberty, your health, um, and, and your family, right? Those are three things. So they came after my liberty. That, that, I will pay down to my last cent to defend my, my reputation and my liberty, right? And, and so that's what they came after. And I had to stand up and fight wow. because they said I was guilty of something I hadn't done. Yeah. And terribly wrong things that I hadn't done. So I had no choice but to fight and stand up and take it like a man and then go after them. And that's what I did. I, I actually won, and then I had to sue the very state I served as attorney general. 
and they paid me over seven figures to have me go away. Wow. Now, now it wasn't just the state, though. What, what was happening at a federal level? Yeah, that was bizarre. This is, this is probably the most bizarre story I've ever heard. And I can't, there's no time to really tell the whole story. But, but the federal government came after me on elections violations. The, the state government or the county government came after me on campaign type and, and off, in office type violations that they and alleged the that weren't true. That weren't true. FEC, the Federal, federal Elections Commission. And I, I think I'm one of the very few people in the world who's actually been sued by the, by the federal, federal government and actually had one of their rules. See, there, there are statutes that are passed by Congress, and then there are administrative rules or federal regulations on the federal level that are promulgated by the federal government, by agencies. Who had, I'm one of the few people I know that actually had a federal rule invalidated as unconstitutional, as illegal by a federal judge here in Utah. Wow. They came after me to try to, to try to make me pay them money because they said I'd broken the law, which I hadn't. And they ended up going home absent one of the tools in their toolbox, which was a federal rule that allowed them to come after people like me. Um, and now they can't. Okay, so I got a couple of questions here that I'm just... Validated rule. I'm so curious about this, John. Um, first of all, if you had lost, if you had lost, how do you think you would have felt being an American in this country, having been a civic servant, having, having, having been trying to like protect people and defend people, and then having... If you had lost, what do you think your life would be like today? Well, I remember I, I was involved in several different proceedings. So which one would I have lost? If I had lost my criminal trial, then I would be in prison right now wearing orange and not eating my Jeez, own food. Jeez, you right? had to fight. I had to fight for my liberty, right? If I had lost to the FEC, it would have been a big fine, but it also would have been humiliating and embarrassing. It would have been hard to practice law. It would have been hard to, to, to chase Could my children. Could they have taken actually your, your, your Well, the, the state bar regula regulates the ethics. That, here's the bizarre thing about what happened to me was I won everything. Yes. Okay, I won a lot of money, and I, and I won my, my reputation back. The state bar investigated me when it was all done. They looked at all the evidence that was presented, and they said that I hadn't even violated, not, not just hadn't violated any laws, I hadn't even violated any ethics. Wow. So that's, that's what the government can do to you. They can, they, yeah. can, they can go after you even when you're innocent of, of any ethical lapses. It is, it is refreshing, John, because I think that there's a lot of very upset citizens today that are looking at our federal situation. They're looking at Afghanistan. They're looking at vaccines. They're looking at everything. And there's a lot of sentiments that there's a lot of mismanagement going on out there. Absolutely. And um, it's, it's a, just a really insane, crazy world. So it's actually good to know that a good man who was falsely accused, maybe for someone else's agenda, could actually stand up, fight, and win, and beat the system but you don't walk away a total winner because unfortunately you have a very uneducated group of people out there that are still probably thinking, um, you know, reflecting poorly on your reputation because you know, they probably don't know the final story. You know, people in, in Utah who I was elected by, 650,000 people voted for me in, in the general election where I won as attorney general. I'll love those people forever. Some of those may not remember or know that I actually was acquitted, mm. that I actually sued the state and won more than seven figures. Yeah. Uh, in compensation from the state because they were wrong yeah. about me. So it's nice to be able to, you know, talk about that and let people know that, you know, but, but here's what I feel the worst about, Chris. This election of the people, we, in, in America, we hold some things just so, that are just so precious to yes. us. And one of those is the results of elections of the people. That's probably the biggest principle that we all believe in, that in this constitutional republic, this democracy of ours, that, that we can elect our own representatives the people who did this, and I, and I believe it was intentional for some of them. In fact, I've got video evidence that it was intentional. They overturned a statewide election after 11 months of my service in office. The thing I feel worst about of all is that the very people who elected me to do great things for them, they didn't get the benefit of their vote. Wow. To me, that's tragic in America, and it can yeah. happen. And we saw it with, with uh, our most recent president, Donald Trump. Yeah. We saw what can happen, whether you like him or not. From the very first day he was elected, he was harassed by people who wanted to impeach him on, yep. the, on his first day of office. Yep. Whether well, you're a supporter or not, it's, it's a principle. The principle is this, this country of ours, they have the right to elect their own representatives. Yeah. It's interesting. It becomes a shell game because um, maybe in the end you won, but maybe they won because you're no longer in office or you're, no pro you know, you're, not, you're not doing any of that. Of course, you're moving on and doing some amazing things because yes. you're... You're now helping Freedom Fight for a lot of companies 
that have people taking advantage, companies right. taking advantage of them. They have clients taking advantage of them. Sometimes they even have employees taking advantage of them. Any of you that are listening, you know, John basically goes toe to toe for businesses that basically retain his services to write those nasty, uh, you know, those, those nasty grams. That's what I like to call it. You know, as a company, when you, when you grow and you become successful, I know this, you service thousands of clients a year. And uh, unfortunately, some people view you as, a, as an easy target. And they want to know if they can use some tactics to extract some money from you uh, just so they can get ahead. And it's sad, but it is the litigious world that we live in today. And John, you're defending a lot of the corporations so that people can't do that to them. Well, yeah, yeah. One of, the, one of the principles for me is, you know, I had the opportunity to serve and defend all the people of the great state of Utah, more than a million, three, three million people. One, one of the honors of my life. Now as a lawyer, I don't have the shackles that I had as attorney general. Really, I really couldn't have a private practice when I was attorney general. Now, I, I just love, I live for the ability to, to help businesses that are facing challenges by government or by big corporations and say, how can I help you win? How can I help you, you know, slay the dragon, kill, kill the elephant in the, in the room or the grill in the room and actually come out better than you would have been had this not happened to you. So let's actually talk about that and start with this. What should someone do if they're feeling legally oppressed by a business, an organization, a government, and they feel like there's nothing to do because of how big their enemy is that they should probably just cave, even if they're in the right? You know, I, I'm the perfect example of a person who didn't have all the resources in the world. I wasn't an IBM. I was me. I was John Swallow. I was the former attorney general at that time, right? And I was able to stand up, find the resources, find the right counsel, and put together a strategy to win. And that's what I help people do. I help them put together a strategy to win, to connect them to the right people, whether, wherever they are in the nation, to help them connect to the right legal counsel, to, and to find the right resources to be able to have a chance to win. And, and you know, I mean, we don't want to get into the weeds of everything that I know and understand. But in a, in a country where like 96% of all the federal and state criminal cases that are filed end in a plea bargain, the reason they end in a plea bargain in a lot of cases is because the defendant doesn't have the resources, doesn't, have, doesn't understand, doesn't have the lawyer to really help give them a chance. And so what do they do? They give up. They say, okay, uncle, uncle, I'll plead guilty to a misdemeanor or to a felony. I'll spend 30 years in prison because I don't want to spend the rest of my life in prison. Or I'll spend 10 years in prison because I don't want to spend 30 years in prison. They give up. I help people understand their case and f connect with the right counsel and find the resources to defend themselves. And whether it's against government or a criminal case or whether it's, it's, a, it's a civil investigation by the Consumer Protection Division, right? And businesses go through that all the time, whether it's in Minnesota or Nevada, because of the network of attorneys generals that I know throughout the country and former attorneys general, I can help them find help anywhere they are. Okay, so first of all, fight or flight, right? It's right. either I'm gonna fight or I'm gonna settle. Right. And and sometimes you have to fight. For you, it could have meant criminally jail time. For you, right. it could have meant a massive fine that maybe maybe you did or didn't have the money for, but it was also just your liberty personally that was being right. threatened. So Obviously, a great example where you said, I'm going to fight. You know, the situation I went up against the SEC, in the end, I ended up signing a document that said I neither admit nor deny. Right. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of feel like I caved. And if I, you know, knowing what I now know today, I would have loved to go back and fight. Well, I you know, it's, it's, it just depends on your circumstances, and it depends on what they're coming after, right? So if they're coming after $10,000 or $20,000, it becomes a business decision, right? And you say, I won't contest, I won't admit it or deny. That's, that's a reasonable approach to that kind of a thing. If I were to come up here and, and say, well, in every case, you should fight to the death, that'd be ridiculous. Yeah. That'd be crazy. That's not good advice. So settling, right? there's a time and a place for There's a for time it, right? to settle. There's you have time to look to at the run. value of your time. You have to look at your reputation. Well, look at my situation. I decided after 11 months in office in the, in the best job I ever had in, in the career that I'd planned for and, and worked for and, and dreamed for and, and achieved for for 20 years, I walked away from that career after 11 months when I resigned my office to fight against this, this corruption that came against me as a private citizen. Oh. I had, it was too distracting. I had to do it. So I decided, to, and some people say I ran, right? I decided that was the only way I could survive and yeah. win. So sometimes you have to run. Yeah, who, who, Kenny Rogers, I love Kenny Rogers, right? The, the late, <laughs> in, in, you know, memory of Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold him. You got to know when to fold him. You got to know when to walk away and you got to know when to run. Yeah. And so part of the strategy of surviving in today's legal world is to know your options, to have the resources to have options, and then to execute those options in a smart way. Wow. John, harrowing. I mean, really serious to have gone through something like that. 
You know, it's interesting. Last year, I actually had someone legally approach me over a matter because I learned from my thing from years earlier. I said, you know, I'm going to stand and fight. And I'm doing this out of principle. I'm doing right. this because I want people from hereafter to know that if you want to mess with me and I am not in the wrong, then I am not like this is no longer worth it. So there's a time to fold them and hold them 100%. Right. So um, today, like what is it that you're doing that is most fulfilling for you? Helping people figure it out, figure out how to stand up against a government, how, how to help people understand how they can actually prepare so they can protect themselves about something that might happen to them down the road if they don't uh, do the right things today. And then, and then when they're in the mess, when they're in the storm, how to, how to navigate the storms and survive the hurricane, right? It, it's just, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's very strategic, but it's very, it's very fulfilling and rewarding for me to be involved in that business. Wow. Congratulations on all your amazing successes and all the people out there that you're helping. Friends, this is Chris Crum with Have It All. I've been interviewing John Swallow, former attorney general, and he's moved on to helping more people, corporations, individuals continue to fight. He's got a brand new podcast out. It's called Just Justice for All. That's right. And you can, you can look that up on iTunes. You're going to find that syndicated on all podcasts. And tell us briefly, what is the podcast really about? You know, it's about helping people understand what the problems are in government. It's, it's really about it's really about helping people understand that they have options, and the options are, you know, to 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 fight when they can, to prepare themselves, to find the right counsel. It's also about what we need to do to change government. Government right now has far too much power. No accountability for the decisions that government people actors make. If I'm if I'm if I work in a government position, I'm basically bulletproof because the government's never going to come against me, wow. right? So these, these people that the government was formed to protect and defend, they get ramrouted by the government. The, the podcast talks, talks about that. We interview people who've been through the process like I went through the process. We hear their stories. We, we hear about the mistakes they made. And Just Justice for All is about shining a light on government corruption and empowering people to survive it. Wow, beautiful. Well, guys, you should definitely be looking up Just Justice for All with John Swallow. John, thank you for being here today on the Have It All Show. And I look forward to connecting with you more. Thank you, Chris.